Hello lovies. I'm going to jump into it right away because it has been forever since I've done an update and we are going to talk about four different things. One, my skin in Scotland. Two, my depicts and debacle. Three, the documentary. And four, my birthday. I apologize for the lighting, but this was kind of an impromptu update and I didn't have any of my lights charged. It's what you get. So number one, my skin in Scotland. She has taken a bit of a beating. I have been on Dupixent for a year and a month now, a year and a month and two weeks, I guess to be exact. It wasn't until I arrived in Scotland that I started having some issues. The first biggest issue was my eyes. I've never had any problems with my eyes being on Dupixent, but I developed what I'm pretty sure was conjunctivitis and I saw an optometrist twice until I was finally referred to an ophthalmologist to really get them checked. They did swabs and things, nothing came back, um, but I was put on an antibiotic oral and an antibiotic eye drop because of how red my eyes were getting on the insides and the outsides. Um, but lo and behold, it did look like it was a Dupixent symptom, one of which I believe I'm still battling. My skin is not used to this cold weather and the wind, so some of the eye eczema that I do have underneath my eyes and around my eye could be that as well. I also do get patches still in my forearms, I'll show you some pictures, as well as my neck a bit, and my lips are so chapped. I actually have a cold sore right now, but it might be from just overdoing it. My family is here at the moment in Scotland and I'm very tired. Yesterday I was extremely fatigued when the cold sore popped up. So yeah, just is what it is. Number two, my Dupixent debacle. So apparently here in Scotland, they want you to fail two different immunosuppressive drugs, not just one like in England. I took cyclosporin a long time ago and that counts. But now they want to take me off of Dupixent and put me on methotrexate. Please make that make sense. That drug is so outdated now. I've been on Dupixent for over a year. I should be eligible for it. I've paid my NHS fee. I'm paying a buttload to be here. And I pleaded my case. I will say the one thing I did not like that was told to me during this um, appointment was that, oh, well, if I give you the Dupixent, that means someone else doesn't get to have it. I'm sorry that your budget is stupid, but that's also a really dumb thing to say to someone. Oh, if you get it, someone else doesn't. Okay, well then, if someone else gets it, I don't. So you're saying that someone here in Scotland that might be Scottish has more of an influence to get it than me? Even though I'm already on the drug, I'm at a baby-making age, I'm about to turn 35, like you're about to put me on an immunosuppressant that I can't even try to get pregnant on. It's worse for my system. And I get EH regularly. Um, I got it once during filming of Still Preventable. Um, I just caught it quickly and, you know, shout out to Dr. Peter Leo who answered my email on a Sunday to be able to call me in some meds for that. But yeah, it was just really disconcerting that I think the only thing that caught his attention was that I name dropped a few people. And now I got a phone call yesterday stating I have a new appointment for November 20th to see this said person that I name dropped. No idea if they are going to give me the Dupixent or not, but he said that they will take a look at my case and try and see if they can come up with an okay scenario that I didn't take both immunosuppressants, I just took the one. And I'm like, that should be enough. I'm on this drug. I'm in a country that is completely different to mine. Give me the drug. So yeah, we'll update you guys on that. Number three, still preventable documentary. I am in film school right now in Scotland. I have two other projects that I am also working on and I am here to learn. So I haven't even started editing still preventable. There is so much stuff that I have been sifting through, especially with the research. How topical steroids came to be on the market not just in a doctor's office, blows my mind. There's still some pieces that I haven't found, but what I have found is just pretty outrageous. So I'm gonna try and incorporate all of that into the documentary. And I even learned something on a podcast that I was just recently on. It hasn't come out yet, but I was chatting with two doctors and they were telling me just how hard it is to ever create a class action lawsuit because of a certain case that came out a long time ago that basically just holds no doctor accountable and it's nuts. 
and it's scary. But yeah, so still preventable is still very much happening. It's just baby steps, guys. People here at the school where I'm learning who do film and documentary work, their short documentaries take them a year to make. So imagine me and how much I've put into creating a feature length documentary. This would be an hour and a half. I've got a lot on my plate, a lot to chew. I really am hoping to get it done um, by the end of summer, fall, autumn time of next year, because I don't want anything to be out of date. I get really angry, especially now with my whole depiction thing. I'm like, this is just enough is enough. And I see people's comments that doctors are still telling them this isn't real. It's just something on the internet and it's BS. And I cannot wait to rub it in their face that they are wrong. And then number four, my birthday. You guys, I'm turning 35, WTF. I had, because of my visa, I had to take off my preventable donations. Um, they're seen as income and I can't freelance. So I can't work for myself, which has been detrimental to my wallet because the only part-time work I can get here is like something they would give teens. Um, <laughs> And really working for 10 to $11 an hour at my age is humiliating. I don't know if that's like the right word or I don't even know if it's humiliating. It's um, time sucking to the point where I could be doing something that's better with my time. So yeah, if anyone wants to share birthday love, you can give to my personal account under the friends and family button. Um, if you want to send me a little birthday gift. Just putting it out there because some people have asked where they can donate and I've had to say I don't have anywhere because technically they see it as me making money. But you can't stop a friend from giving someone a birthday like present. So yeah. I love you guys. And I wanted to give a big shout out to Jen Fugo's podcast, The Healthy Skin Show, and to Dermaleave. They are like the biggest sponsor for the documentary. And I am so grateful for them. We have a ton more. I've been posting stuff on Insta. Just thank you everybody, for, you know, for Eczema Awareness Month. This is an important month for us all. Remember, we came from eczema. 90% of us came from eczema. Do not ostracize the eczema community, especially with that hashtag. You know, this is an eczema. We, I get it. It's, it's not eczema, but we came from it and we started using topical steroids because we thought our eczema was horrible and we hated it and we felt alone. So don't let them feel alone. We're all in this together. This is a fight. We have to fight together. So I love you guys. I see you. I am you. Um, keep pushing. Keep sharing your stories. Get out there. And if you run into a dumb doctor, just try and find a new one because one day we'll get to rub it in their face that they are wrong. I love you.